most of us have someone in our lives whose talents complement our own. You might banter on about how combining those talents could amount to something great. But more often than not, life gets in the way, your priorities shift, and you eventually forget about the whole thing. Well, we're going to show you what happens when you suspend your normal daily routine and actually follow through with your passion projects. Shortly after I joined the KBB video department, Micah and I would joke around about how cool it would be to arrange a helicopter skydive at a location of our choosing, all the while knowing that such a stunt couldn't take place in a rented helicopter. As the modern day poster boy of dreams coming true, Micah finally achieved his lifelong goal of owning his very own helicopter. With the primary logistical concern out of the way, our once pie in the sky idea grew to be a reality. And here we are. And by here, we mean California's Anza Borrego Desert, where we leverage KOTU cameraman Kelly McCluskey's local knowledge of the area to seek out and select one of three potential drop zones. Or at least that was the idea. Okay, so we've arrived here in the desert uh, en route to our first destination, which uh, actually looks to be the most promising, at least on paper. Uh, oh, I should also mention the vehicle we're driving. It's a, uh, the new Jeep Renegade, the smallest and most affordable entry into the Jeep brand. Yes, I know they make a Compass and Patriot, but you know. So uh, specifically what we're driving here is the Renegade Trailhawk. The range topping and also most capable version of the Renegade clan. I'm actually really eager to see how it performs out on the trails. This doesn't look anything like the map. Oh, uh, there's power lines. What the f I think we got a problem, man. The dry lake bed's inside the state park. Hey, KBB Zach Velasic, what's going on? Uh, none of the drop zones look particularly good. Uh, there's power lines, a lot of rocks, so, um... Have you considered somewhere like further east? Uh, it feels like maybe it's a little bit more open out there. Uh... Actually, seems to be a dirt airfield that's sectioned off. Looks like it could be ideal. We'll scout this out first thing tomorrow morning, and if, it's, uh, if it looks good, I'll go ahead and uh, send you a text with the coordinates. After a quick jaunt into town for some apropos refreshments, ah oh, yeah, we decided to kick back and play the waiting game until the next morning. Because the backup location looks so promising on paper, I made a command decision and forwarded the new coordinates to Micah before heading out to the site. All right, let's go. Over this last set of hoopties, yes, I call whoops hoopties, and we should be. Oh, there it is. This is it. This is our spot. Oh man, 
This wind here. Uh, we got about 15 to 20 mile an hour winds. Uh, Micah is already in route. Hopefully we can intercept him along the way and divert him to Borrego. <laughs> you made it. With round two of the waiting game in effect, our attention shifted to preparing the Renegade for a review, as well as helping out with the camera work. So, Zach, what's the weather looking like? It's holding steady. Uh, good steady or bad steady? Good steady. Um, it looks like around 7 p.m. down to 9 miles an hour. If this holds true, I will take back every bad thing I've ever said about meteorologists. You know, my, uh, my dad's a meteorologist. But I never said anything bad about him. Point taken. Uh, how, how are you feeling right now? I feel great. How are you actually feeling? I will feel greater if we actually get through this. <laughs> That's a good sign. Uh, looks like we've got sloppy flags. That's it. it sounds like the name of a comedian from like the 1960s. Uh, floppy flags opening for Red Skelton. In this case, that's a really good sign for us. Here, this is the spot. Things are looking primo. Uh, we're getting some gusts at like five miles an hour. Other than that, it is completely calm. So we're in business. I offer to help, but... Uh, don't touch my chopper. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want you in any longer than I have to. <laughs> I'm already getting rid of you at 7,500 feet. Same thing? Yeah, please someone next to it. So, uh, Zach, this is kind of a big one for you. After about 10 years, this is my final skydive. I figured this would be a really cool way to go out. Go out with a bang. Poor choice of words. Yeah. Um, Go out with a whoosh as you uh, safely land. Yeah, but uh, surrounded by friends, beautiful weather, my very own drop zone. And from a branding perspective, the Jeep Renegade. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Shameless plug number three. Yay! Geo traffic, skydivers 7,500 and below, seven minutes out.
thank God. There is his parachute. Oh, oh. I don't know if I expressed it there, but for a moment, uh, a few moments, I couldn't see Zach's parachute. But I see him there, he's orange and he's circling. Oh God, what a relief. Perfect, perfect. It's a good way to finish it out. We'll see. High five. Yeah. Buddy! Yeah! So good. I can't, dude, like I was flying and I was like, I don't see a shoot. I don't see a shoot. <laughs> Where's the shoot? And visibility was pretty bad up there. I was got five, six thousand feet. I was like, eek. And there was, there's probably like two minutes there where we're just like, damn it. And then <laughs> that brilliant bit of orange and everything is okay. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah. Whew. What if? It's a question that invokes either feelings of regret or accomplishment. Now, we're not saying you should slap a parachute on your back and jump out of a perfectly good aircraft, but if you have the desire and the means, truly amazing things can happen when you follow your passion.